It's been a while since we caught up, no? This past month or so, I took a break from studio vlogs to prioritize client and agency work. And by the time my projects had wrapped up, I felt pretty wrung out and needed to catch up on a lot of life admin stuff, like hunting down invoices, bookkeeping, deep cleaning my apartment, and thinking about goals for 2022. But I still managed to treat myself with some cut flowers and sneak some drawing time in with colored pencils at least. In addition to that, I got a bit of client mail. It's so rare to see my work in its natural habitat, so it's nice to have a physical reminder of the fruits of your labor. You might remember it from a previous vlog, but this one's from the Washington Post in a series about everyday women and their relationship to financial literacy. This other one is for the Stanford Business Magazine for a column called What Matters to Me Now and Why. Low key, I've also been working on comics, but I'm still too precious about them to show anyone yet. But maybe once I wrap these pages up, I'll show them to some friends. 2021 ended with quite a bit of cooking since I invited my parents over for American Thanksgiving and a Christmas lunch. And I did my best to provide a feast. How on earth do people cook for more than three heads and still have leftovers? And the kimchi is on this side, mm -hmm. and there's spinach in the middle, too. When I've been inside too long in the winter, I don't typically like to head to Midtown, but I do like to hit up a museum once in a while. One thing I've really relished over the past few months has been visiting museums for free through the use of Culture Pass. I hadn't been to MoMA in quite some time, so I decided it was about time for a visit. First, I was wooed by some of Alexander Calder's shapes and lines. I mean, just look at this horse. Next up was the Sophie Toiber Arp exhibit, and wow, such dreamy shapes. Here are a few more of my favorites from this visit. Admittedly, I've never met into Jackson Pollock while learning about him in academia, but seeing his work at scale up close in person, I can kind of get it. This is quite the comfortable looking chair. Art digestion tends to make me very hungry, so I stopped by the museum cafe afterwards for a coffee and garden sandwich. Then I worked on some sketches for a bit. Afterwards, I snuck a walk-in back in Dumbo before heading home to submit my sketches with my assistant. Hey there, how was your day? Hmm? Did you get a lot done today? Hmm? Lots of meetings? <laughs> yeah. A 10 out of 10 day. The December holidays arrived quickly after that, and with it, 
some holiday mail. First up is some mail from my friend Brandon. His stickers and illustrations are always filled with humor and a warm attention to detail. Next is from my friend Wenting, whose work I've mentioned on a previous vlog. <laughs> That's so cool. Lastly is this lush calendar put together with love from Dumbok. It features the art of 12 Vietnamese artists in the diaspora to fundraise COVID relief for disadvantaged communities in Vietnam. And here's my friend Diana's work. On that note, let's move right along to January. As it turns out, I have some news about Chow. Back in mid-December, I noticed she was having trouble eating her dry food. After several vet appointments and a canceled dental surgery, the vet called to tell me that she had found a large mass on Chow's jaw that had previously been undetectable until after she'd been fully anesthetized. After extracting some tissue for a biopsy, the vet became certain it was a malignant squamous cell carcinoma. We talked on the phone for a bit as she patiently answered my questions. She had concluded that any treatment would result in very poor quality of life for Chow, so the best option was just to make her as comfortable as possible at home. The vet estimated Chow had a remaining one to two months of life. Every day since, she seems just a little bit smaller. She needs to be fed in a particular way with food the consistency of a viscous paste. Her grooming needs to be assisted with pet wipes and brushing. And when she's not lapping up her food, she is, for the most part, drooling in her sleep. Since I adopted her when she was six years old, I've never known Chow as a kitten. But based on these very basic needs, it's almost like my sweet girl is reverting back into a kitten. We've been through so much together in the past five years, I can't imagine my adult life without her. But even though her diagnosis was hard to accept, I'm at least grateful that I've been afforded time to make the most of our remaining days together. I intend to pamper her with all the pets, cuddles, and bone broth she will accept. Now that I've shared that news with you, I hope you're ready to get back to some lighter topics. A few months back, I started taking Mandarin classes once a week. Why Mandarin? I'll admit I've been wanting to learn a new language for a long time, but couldn't decide on one. My thinking with Mandarin is that maybe it would provide me a little bit of an entryway into learning about my heritage. Also, the Hanzi, or written characters, are just really pretty. Additionally, a few of my friends know it, so hopefully when I'm further along, I can practice with them. But now I'm too much of a beginner to hold a proper combo. My goal is to finish the book I'm learning from in six months. On to some personal work. I've been meaning to craft an elaborate room scene centered around a character who is lost in focus most likely in a book, and I finally have time to work on it. I still have a lot of aspects of this piece to work out, but it feels almost like a family of equations. That probably doesn't make it sound very fun, but I assure you it is. It's nice to take your time with a piece without worrying about pesky deadlines. Anyway, my intention for this one, once it's finished, is to subtly animate the illustration by using Photoshop. After drawing for a few hours, let's reward ourselves with a nice hot drink. Over my break, I boned up on countless YouTube vids about making matcha lattes, and I'm excited to tell you, I finally cracked the code. 
won't be unequally distributed lattes no more. Only green, happy, frothy lattes from now on. The key is to sift the matcha through a strainer. Then use a whisk to mix the hot water until you've reached a bubbly paste consistency. Then you can just add some hot milk. I used oat milk here. And a sweetener of choice, mine being maple syrup. Not bad if I do say so myself. And they do. Back to drawing, I think I have the main color story down now. As you can see, I'm still building out the shapes, but once those are down, I can really focus on the color at large, as well as the shading. Obviously, this piece isn't too conceptually involved, but my aim was just creating a little world to get lost in, both in the creating of it and the viewing. After dinner, Chow and I wrapped up our snow day by settling into the couch to watch Chasing Arizona for the first time. Before I finished editing this, Chow's health deteriorated to the point where the vet and I decided it was time to say goodbye. I was grateful to have been given time to spend with her, but it still went by much too fast. Chow was there with me for two cross-country moves, countless heartaches and accomplishments, and one pandemic. She was renowned for her biscuit-making abilities and unrivaled dance moves. She could throw down in a nap party like nobody's business and literally could not seem to harm a single fly. Goodbye, my sweet girl. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.